A few years ago, I ate a delicious, albeit delicious, blueberry muffin at my local cafe and ended up in bed for three days with a fever, sweating, delirium, nausea down to my very bones, unable to sleep or eat or function. I had no idea what was going on. Fast forward several years later, I have a little bit of an idea and I'm going to be sharing that with you today. Gut health issues are big in our culture and society today and those of us who have them will know that they also will feature big in your life. Things like what happened to me and much, much worse can end up happening and let you know that you have an issue. Oddly enough, things can be happening in your body that you may think are totally unrelated. I've been doing a deep dive into gut health issues in my own life, online research, talking with medical professionals, professionals, talking with health professionals, talking with other people with issues and have found out that often you can also be having no symptoms at all or symptoms showing up in other areas that are actually seemingly unrelated. Maybe back pain, maybe headaches, maybe neck pain, maybe skin conditions, maybe, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that I've heard, bladder issues. And you'll go down, or musculoskeletal issues, pain in the joints, and you'll go down a journey of healing with medical professionals, health professionals that work in that area, not realizing that the root cause is actually your gut. This has been my experience, and recently I decided to undertake something called the elemental diet. This is one part of a possible healing protocol that people with gut health issues may consider. I'm going to talk much more about it in a moment and why and who and how it all works. But I got inspired to make this video because in doing the elemental diet, I had shared my experiences with my friends, my business coach, various people who had suggested that sharing my experiences online through videos with my audience, with the people who are interested in the work that I do might be really illuminating, especially connecting it back to the work that I do of healing, nervous system healing, nervous system regulation, building resilience, building deeper connection to embodiment. My name is Mira Rao and I am a resilience and embodiment coach and that's my jam. And I thought I had it pretty sussed. And, you know, I've done some good work. I've done some healing work. There is massive connection between gut health issues and stress and therefore the nervous system. That's well known, but it's not the whole picture. It's an essential part of the picture, but those on the holistic healing path will know we may need to come at things from lots of different angles to get the fullest expression and experience of health and vitality that's possible to us. This has certainly been my experience. My nervous system has healed massively and yet lots of chronic years of trauma and stress long ago had actually damaged some of the organs to the extent that something more than just a calm, well-regulated nervous system was able to give me. Hence, I decided to go on the elemental diet. Hence, I started to share about it and what it's been doing and why I'm doing it. I realized that I was doing a little bit of a disservice in the way that I was sharing. I've been doing pictures on my stories and talking about my day-to-day -day experience. Great. I noticed from some of the inquiries I was, I was getting and the messages I was getting back that people were thinking I was doing some sort of health spa detox thing to like clear up my skin and look and feel great. And admittedly, there are detoxification elements, anti-inflammatory elements to this protocol. It's a protocol, dietary protocol. But that is not the main aim of the game. 
I want to talk a bit more seriously about why I'm doing it, who else might benefit from it, because if you're afflicted with gut health issues, you will know that it's a very painful and difficult journey. Either you don't want to face it. That was me for a while. Like, oh, everyone in the health community says something different. I don't want to deal with it. It's too confusing. Or you're trying the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing and the next thing and not getting answers. That day that I ended up in bed led to a diagnosis of IBS. So if you're someone that suffers with IBS, I'm here to tell you that it is possible that what I'm doing may be a protocol step in your IBS journey, healing journey, that may be helpful. IBS is a rubbish diagnosis. It doesn't tell you anything. It tells you that you have a collection of symptoms that you already know you have if you've gone and sought out the diagnosis. You may be given a set of a few little herbs and a bit of this and of that and told to go on the FODMAP diet and sent on your way and then kind of think that you're going to have to live with it for the rest of your life. In 70 to 80% of IBS cases, there is something else called SIBO, which I'm going to talk about in depth in this video that is actually at the cause of the IBS symptoms. I wanted to make this video because if you are suffering like that and you're trying to wade your way through, it is extremely helpful to learn from other people. I have done that. I've learned from other people's personal journeys and experiences. I've learned from friends who are experts in this area. I've learned from experts in this area who are not friends, just experts, who maybe will become friends. I have learned from lots of online research, both informal through YouTube channels and Reddit and through reading online, uh, reading health journal, journal, health journal articles, published medical data to put together a bit of a picture of what's going on for me. If you're looking at something like this or you know someone who was, I had a client earlier this morning who not personally afflicted, but her mum was. So I sent her some information about how to start to navigate and get the information that you might need that can help you make some progress because you might find yourself, if you don't, feeling hopeless, helpless and limited by this condition, not knowing that there is actually a way out. I don't know everybody's way out. I just know that there is the possibility. I know that data is coming out, that medical research is being done, that health research is being done. It's a fairly new field. And gastrointestinal issues, GI, speaking about the area right down from our mouth, through our gullet, through our esophagus, down through our stomachs, small intestine and large intestine. It's a complex area. There's lots of interconnected parts of what's going on. And there are some amazing and committed people out there trying to figure stuff out and really helping people. I'm no expert. I put together what I can from what I've learned and what I've experienced. And that is what I offer to you here. I'm just sharing my experience, sharing my knowledge that I've gained. But if you're on your own journey, I recommend that you work with health professionals, you work with ex people who are experts and you work with the innate expertise and wisdom of your own body. And that is what I teach people how to do. And that is how I have managed to transform and feel a little bit differently about this journey. So back to that fateful day, what happened afterwards? It lasted a while. I turned to my usual healthy methods, some juices and vegetables and salads and fresh fruit and was in pain, had lots of gas, had lots of bloating. I couldn't eat anything without getting really bloated, really gassy and experiencing a lot of pain for about a month or two. I went to my GP. She suggested a colonoscopy. I had a colonoscopy. They didn't find much. A little bit of gastritis, which is inflammation in the stomach. And um, I have what's called a tortuous bowel. <laughs> Sounds awful, but it means just extra long. And that can have some challenges to it. So everybody's got different things going on in there. And there are lots of different bacterial things, lots of different areas where inflammation can appear, lots of different reasons for that. I'm going to narrow down and focus in on a few that are relevant to me and a, and a few people with similar issues to me. IBS, IBS slash 
SIBO. And I was given Iberogast and told to take some, some um, flaxseed or LSA, linseed, sunflower seeds, um, almond seeds ground up to try and help move things through. I tried those things, they didn't really work. I started noticing because I am fairly attuned to my own body. I did a lot of meditation. I did a lot of relaxation. I have a busy life. I run my own practice. I run the business side of it. I also am doing a master's level degree. So it's a busy full life and then the normal things of life. But I have a lot of strategies in place for managing the stress of that, that I was using. And yet still, I was like lethargic and no energy and my digestion was just getting worse and worse. And I believed if I regulate my nervous system, I can heal everything, you know, which there's some truth in that. But sometimes if it's been going on for a while, as I said, we've ended up doing damage that needs different kinds of interventions and they all work together. This mind body split, it's all together. So these things weren't working. And I went on noticing then what foods were making it worse for me. What was triggering the pain and the gas and the bloating to a higher degree? What could I not tolerate? Maybe I'll start eliminating those foods. So I started eliminating pulses and grains, uh, chickpeas, lentils, um, kidney beans, black beans, um, all sugars, all processed sugar had pretty much gone anyway. Caffeine went. Um, and um, fruit had to go. So I noticed that fruit was the sugar in fruit was really activating all of this. And I started to feel a little bit better. So I wasn't aggravating it as much. It was starting to calm down a little bit, but my food was getting very restricted and I was starting to become a little bit malnourished in levels of particularly, I'm a vegetarian as well. So particularly iron, B12, the usual suspects, D, vitamin K um, and then my protein. So all those, that was the way that I used to get protein a lot through chickpeas and hummus and that kind of food. And suddenly that wasn't available to me anymore. So my diet became very narrow. I wasn't getting the kind of nutrition nutrition that I needed, just basic nutrition, but I wasn't in as much pain, but I was still like, this isn't, this doesn't quite, work this isn't going to work because then I was getting low energy from not really having enough of the right foods so I would also then just ugh, get sick of it maybe have a piece of chocolate or some beans you know just need it and then have a massive flare-up be in bed for half a day with this pain ah interestingly enough sometimes you won't have any symptoms at all or sometimes the symptoms will be completely unrelated back pain, neck pain, various things, and it can take a while. And I believe actually that I had this underlying condition for some time before that first really bad flare up that actually took place in my guts. So I've had some other things in other areas of my body, hip pain, bladder, kind of bladder issues that actually were, were I believe now in what I found out related. So it's worth checking this stuff out. The, I was lucky. I also had a friend who was a specialist in gut health and I started working with her boss and her team, uh, one of the experts. So there's a few dedicated experts, as I said, around the world who are doing beautiful research and beautiful work looking into all of this. One of them is here in Australia, in Tasmania. He runs a clinic called Goulds. His name is Dr. Jason Horolak. H-A-W-R-E-L-A-K. I'll put some links down later. And I started working a little bit more deliberately around what is going on here. And I was introduced to this term SIBO. SIBO stands for Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth, S-I-B-O. Basically, what SIBO is and how you get it is I believe fascinating personally I find it fascinating in your small intestine 
there should not be <laughs> any bacteria. Your small intestine is designed to absorb the nutrients from your food and to move that through down into the large intestine where woohoo, big party, lots of bacteria can live happily and healthily. What happens if for any reason your small intestine's motility, that is its capacity to move, is impeded or affected, food starts to get stuck in the small intestine and this creates a different terrain in there. So when it gets stuck in there and everything has slowed down, two things can happen. There's a valve between your small intestine and your large intestine, which is designed to let all of that material go down, down and out. So if there's bacteria in the small intestine, in theory, it should move down and out. This mechanism is called the migrating motor complex. Okay, so motility, capacity of this organ to move, and the way that it moves is the migrating motor complex, and that takes all of this material down into the large intestine or the colon. If it's not moving and there's food stuck there, sometimes bacteria can rise back up out of the large intestine and come and sit in the small intestine where you, you beauty, there's a whole bunch of food and it starts eating it. Sometimes it comes in through, you know, through the mouth, but, but bacteria can come that way. The migrating motor complex, this way of moving things through, is meant to deal with that, to take that bacteria out if it gets in there. But if that motility is impeded, then the food sits there, the bacteria starts to have a party, it starts to eat your food, so you don't get the nutrients from it that you should, and it starts to damage the villi, it starts to damage the lining of your actual stomach, and it produces all this gas, which is the discomfort, where we end up with a lot of the discomfort. The way that the motility or the migrating motor complex works fully is not 100% understood. But there are a few things that they believe lead to this happening. So you might get obstructions through lesions. Some people will have surgery and it ends up with lesions in their bowel. I was just speaking with a, a client who was talking about someone they knew that had had a hysterectomy and then they had ended up with all these lesions and that had blocked. Okay, so there were actual blockages in the small intestine. Sometimes it can happen from food poisoning and then the small intestine gets damaged. Sometimes chronic stress and trauma can do it too. So there's something called the enteric nervous system, which is the aspect of the nervous system that controls the movement, controls them, well, influences and, and works towards, as I said, I go and gather all the science and do my best to try and simplify it. But if I'm wrong anywhere, please correct me. Or if I've expressed something not in the best way, I'm really open to the feedback so I can get it more accurate for people but it influences this migrating motor complex. Okay, so it's through where the nerves go in, the <clears throat> enteric nervous system. And that can be deeply influenced by the parasympathetic nervous system. So it's very popular, people are learning about the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest response, and the vagus nerve, which can influence the enteric nervous system. It's certainly the case that if we're in our sympathetic versus parasympathetic, nervous system that's our fight flight response if we're living there which many many people are we're depriving our guts of a lot of time <laughs> and space and energy and things that they need to do that work that nervous system support that they need so i shifted that part my nervous system was pretty on board but the damage had been done there were bacteria living in there and there was damage to the actual capacity of the motility. There was damage to the motility in my small bowel. Okay, so not, not moving that through, not moving the bacteria through. So I worked with my friend's clinic and got given the diagnosis, the more helpful diagnosis of SIBO versus that rather unhelpful bucket diagnosis of IBS. There are a couple of different types or a few different types of SIBO and they require slightly different treatment methods. 
you will discover what they are by drinking a fluid, it creates sugar, it has a reaction and you'll get gas on your breath, which you can then measure with a breath test and that tells you what you've got. Then that tells them how to support you better to try and treat and get rid of that bacteria. Okay, so there are two main ways that people work to get rid of that bacteria. One, by killing it. And there's a few ways of trying to kill it. And two, by restoring motility, that movement to the small intestine. So the small intestine can do what it's meant to do, which is move that bacteria through. But if the nerves are damaged, it has a hard time. So there's a lot of healing, underlying healing in so many areas that needs to go on. And the bacteria themselves are impeding that healing. So different people have different perspectives on this. If you end up doing a deep dive as I have and looking at into the work of a few of the experts, which I'll list at the end, you'll find this out. Some people think this is a better way. Some people think that's a better way. And my advice for what it's worth, which is not medical advice, <laughs> is to take all of that and take it back into yourself and learn to have as empowered an experience of your health journey as you can which is tricky with the way that the medical system has been set up where we've been taught to kind of hand over our autonomy sovereignty and power to experts who are yes experts but that knowledge is constant they don't know everything okay but it can be scary and i understand that where was i getting off my soapbox again to talk about Mm. So, restoring motility and killing bacteria. So, one of the ways to kill the bacteria, so killing the bacteria can help restore motility, restoring motility can help move the bacteria out. Killing the bacteria can be done through antibiotics, herbal antimicrobials, or the elemental diet, which is what I'm currently doing. The way the elemental diet works is by starving the bacteria. So there is no solid food during the entire period. It is all made up of absorbable materials that get digested very quickly into your small intestine so that the bacteria have nothing to eat and the idea is they die off. You want to be working, in my opinion, on trying to restore motility at the same time so that when you come off the elemental diet, which I haven't done yet. I'm day 13. I was going to do 14 days. I'm going to do 21 days. I'll explain a little bit about that in a moment. They don't come back. Okay, so the natural mechanism of cleaning out the migrating motor complex can be restored to health and keep them away. The other way to support the return of motility to the organ is to heal the nervous system. So we can kill the bacteria in two ways, drugs her, drugs or herbs through sub, some kind of substance or through starvation. And we can work towards healing motility, restoring motility, which again can be done in a few different ways, relaxation, nervous system, and there are some supplements that can be used Uh, The two that I've heard about, which I'll be testing, so I can't give you information on this yet, is um, extract of artichoke and extract of ginger. And I believe these are called prokinetics as well. So trying to get that kinetic activity into the system. Stress is a big part of this. So in my case, there may be a few root causes. Surgery, food poisoning and stress can be sort of how I've learned to group the main categories of what can lead to a reduction in motility in your GI tract and then a um, population of SIBO. And I believe in my case, it was trauma and stress and damage to the nervous system that was probably the main contributor over a long period of time, a long time ago. Hence why this is so interesting to me, this topic, because I'm really looking at coming at it from that angle as one of the primary practices that will support everything else. But as I said, it isn't enough for me and for many others in and of itself. It needs to be supported with this other strategies. So just checking my notes over here. So elemental diet and SIBO specifically, 
In 2004, one of these experts, we've mentioned Dr. Jason Horolak, another one is Dr. Mark Pimentel, Pimentel I think it is, P-I-M-E-N-T-A-L. He did a study on 94 patients and found that 80% of them, after two weeks on the elemental diet, didn't show SIBO results in their breath tests anymore. So the SIBO had cleared. After three weeks, 21 days, 85% of them showed that the SIBO had cleared. So this is a seminal study that was done in this area for SIBO related issues and the elemental diet. For many people, they've run a similar course to me, done a colonoscopy, tried IBS strategies, done the antimicrobials, the herbal treatments, maybe tried antibiotics and then found that they came back. Okay, even after an elemental diet, it can come back unless you restore motility. This is what I'm learning, which needs the support of nervous system regulation to happen because we're healing nerves here. As I said at the beginning, if this is you, my heart goes out to you, your case will be unique, it will be individual, it will be complex in its own special way, and that is okay. If you can find the right people on your team to support you, and please reach out to me if this has touched you in any way or you wanna know more, I'm happy to share what I know. I 100% believe that in this balance of really feeling into your own self-love, your capacity for self-love, your capacity to regulate your nervous system, you can become discerning enough to find the right health practitioners who can give you the right information and who'll be the right fit for you to support you in your journey. Not much is known yet. The people who I've been looking into that I've seen mentioned many times in lots of online articles in lots of online materials in the unofficial and official channels. I've mentioned Dr. Dr. Mark Pimental, Dr. Jason Horolak. So Dr. Horolak's in Australia, Dr. Mark Pimental is in America. We also have Dr. Nerala Jacoby here in Australia and Dr. Alison Seebacker over in the States. These four are the ones that I've found so far and there may be plenty more that you know about and please let me know who you think is really doing groundbreaking, interesting research and developments in this area. And for a less formal but still rigorous dive into this area and and a sense of hope i recommend rebecca coombs and the healthy gut podcast so i've been listening to a lot of her stuff watching a lot of her stuff she's very friendly australian as well approachable and breaks it down in a way that's really personable and accessible again i was talking to this client who was talking about someone they knew who has come to a situation where i was a while back of food reduction down to such a point that they're feeling demoralized. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to work with this. I'm just going to give up. Life feels limited. It's not a nice place to be and it's not a place that one has to stay. But because so little is known in mainstream medicine and the solutions that are being given aren't solutions, they are temporary symptom management protocols. People are not feeling better long term. And there are ways you want to have adequate nutrition, stress management, motility restored and bacteria removed from you in order to have the holistic picture of healing. The elemental diet, which I'm currently doing, is one way to support quite a bit of that. When you get rid of the bacteria, it takes stress off your system, which allows your nervous system to heal. The nervous system healing then allows bacteria to be moved out. So there's these cyclical co-supportive processes that go on. As I said, if you're suffering in this way, my heart goes out to you, please reach out. I hope that what I've shared has been helpful. I really wanted to express this because I don't want to give people the wrong impression about the elemental diet. It's a rigorous undertaking. It can be costly. There is no solid food for the entire time. It's one solution, one approach among many, but I wanted to give the full comprehensive and proper picture. I hope this has been helpful. And if you're suffering 
I really want to offer you the possibility that there is hope, there is relief, there is the possibility for healing out there. Take good care.